Hey there, I'm Brian Goulet of GouletPens.com, and I am literally preparing right now to go to a work conference for next week. And as I was doing it, I was trying to decide which pens and notebooks and stuff like that I wanted to take with me, and I thought, you know, it'd probably be pretty cool to put this into a video and show you at least what goes through my mind when I'm preparing to go away to a conference. Uh, maybe it's something that could be helpful for you on your next work conference or business trip or some kind of business -y related things where you want to take your fountain pens. So that's what I'm going to focus on on this video. Now there are some key factors that I kind of take into account when I'm taking pens away to a conference. Now normally when I'm working, I'm here around the office, I have pen stuff everywhere, and it's not a problem, I don't worry too much. But when I'm actually going somewhere, I try to be a little more intentional about how am I actually going to be using my pens and what do I want to take with me? I can't take my whole pen collection, so I have to be very intentional about it. So I'm going to really focus on which pens, uh, which uh, ink, the notebooks, and then a couple accessories that are going to help me to transport it all. And the considerations that I really take into account are portability. So I want to be able to take it on an airplane, ideally all in my checked luggage, so I don't have, or sorry, in my carry-on luggage, so I don't have to check anything unless I want to. Um, durability is very important because I know I'm going to be moving around a lot. You know, I may drop things here and there, so I want things that are going to be pretty durable. And then functional and reliable as well. So something that I know if I hear a really good idea or I'm inspired to write something down, I have a pen that is going to be very reliable and I can just whip it out and do whatever I need to do. So those are all kind of the factors I'm taking into consideration. One of the first pens I always consider carrying is the Pilot Metropolitan, especially in a fine nib. And only $15 is very inexpensive, so you don't have to worry about losing it or dropping it or anything like that if that happens to happen. It's a reliable writer and it's a fine nib, so when you're getting handouts and things like that with other people's paper and you don't know the paper quality, having a finer nib is always a safe bet. The snap cap is really convenient for capping and uncapping the pen when you're taking quick little notes throughout the day, and it takes a cartridge or a converter. Either way, you can bring your own bottled ink or you can just carry cartridges with you and pop them in as you need them. Another great pen to consider is the Lamy 2000. Uh, and the nib, you can use whatever you want, but the extra fine is probably a good way to go if you don't know what kind of paper you're gonna run into. Some things I like about the Lamy 2000, it's a great writer, very solid, very enjoyable experience. It's a piston fill, so it has a larger ink capacity. So if you're gonna be taking it out for a whole day's worth of taking notes, chances are you can make it through just on that one fill. The snap cap is really convenient, it posts well, and it feels good in the hand. The ink window is nice, so if you are getting low on your pen, you can tell it's time to switch over to another backup pen. And it's an understated design that's impressive, but also not something too flashy, so it's not gonna stand out a whole lot. Another pen that I like is the Twisby VAC 700 with an extra fine nib. And the reason I like the VAC 700 is because the ink chamber actually seals up when it's closed, so when you're flying with it, you don't have to worry about leaks. And it's also a very large ink capacity, so as you're taking it throughout the day, you're probably gonna make it all day, even if you're writing a whole lot. And it's a clear pen, so you can see if the ink level is getting low. This next pen is one that I really love, the Pilot Vanishing Point. It's super convenient, very kind of unique mechanism on this pen because it's a click mechanism. A click retractable fountain pen nib is really not very common, something kind of unique to the Vanishing Point, which makes it so convenient when you're at some seminar type setting because you can just have one hand operation to open and close your pen and you can go about your writing. And the extra fine nib on this pen is really quite fine, so if you are writing on terrible paper, that extra fine nib is gonna give you a really Really good bet for being able to write on it successfully. The last pen option is kind of a backup, but it's a Lamy Rollerball. This particular one I have is a Charcoal Safari. The nice thing about the Rollerball is it's extremely convenient. You can leave it uncapped and not have to worry about it drying out. There are a couple different color options, so if you want to write on a handout that has black writing on it, your writing will still kind of stand out a little bit. And it's a smooth writing experience. All the Lamy Rollerballs are the same. It's got a snap cap, which is nice and convenient and it's convenient if you're writing on people's business cards because those are often not fountain pen friendly. If I'm jotting down a couple of notes about a conversation I had with somebody, the rollerball is usually the best go-to. Now let's talk some notebooks. First one I've got is a Filofax notebook, and the reason that I really like this one is because the pages are removable. You can pull the pages out after you've written your notes, you can file it away into different sections if you're at different seminars or you have brainstorming versus networking or whatever it might be. And the color options you have can stand out from all of the other people's notebooks that are going to be at your conference. 
Next notebook option I have is a Leuchtturm a hardcover notebook. And the reason that I like this one is it helps to organize your thoughts as well. It's got page numbers and it's got a table of contents in the front so you can organize things a little bit that way. And this particular one I like because it's a dot paper, which works well for to-do lists, it works well for taking notes or doing any kind of mind mapping or brainstorming. The dots are subtle, so it kind of works for like a blank paper and you're not restricted to working just strictly across the lines. Last notebook option that I usually carry around is a Midori Traveler's Notebook in the passport size. This one's a little meaty. I've got several notebooks in here, but you can take them out. You can have just one in there if you want. And the reason I like this is because it's really rugged, really durable, kind of stands out, looks kind of cool. So when I'm pulling it out, you know I'm just not a cor really corporate stiff, but you know I'm kind of a, a hip guy. The fact I said that proves that I'm not. But <clears throat> it's very convenient. I can carry it in my pocket when I'm going out to a lunch meeting or something like that. I don't have to carry this big notebook or bring my backpack or whatever. I can just carry this and a pen and I'm good to go. Now let's talk about ink. One way that you can carry your ink is in a sample vial. Now when you buy samples from Goulet, it comes with two milliliters, but it'll hold up to seven. So if you have bottled ink, you can either reuse sample vials from samples you've bought, or you can buy them in 10 packs that we have, and you can fill them with whatever you want. Another option that I really like is a Diamine 30 mil bottle. This is actually a relatively recent addition to Goulet, but I've been using these for a while because they're plastic. And so you don't really have to worry about transporting them into samples or anything. You can just have your ink that you know you always travel with in this bottle. And because it's plastic, you don't have to worry about the glass breaking or anything like that. And it's one ounce, so you can carry it in your carry-on luggage. Last ink option I have, this is purely just for convenience, but ink cartridges. You know, a lot of pens accept ink cartridges, and the main reason to have them is for convenience sake. And in this type of situation, convenience can really be your most important factor. Whenever I'm traveling, I really have three kind of mainstay inks that I like to go with. Noodler's Heart of Darkness. It's great, it's black, and it's really good on cheap absorbent paper. For a red, I like to have a red that stands out and is, uh, you know, for the bright ideas that I might have. Uh, Diamine Red Dragon is my go-to. It performs well and it's vibrant, but not too vibrant. And the last one I really like is Diamine Majestic Blue. It's a dark blue, so it's not super obvious when I'm writing with it, but it stands out from the black that I might be competing with on the page. Last thing I wanna cover is there are some accessories that I like to carry with me. First one I have is this Aston Case 10 leather case. The thing I like about it, and it's really any pen case of any kind, it doesn't have to be this one, but I can carry my pens in it and I can also tuck away the ink samples in here so I can keep everything in one nice little package. Or if I don't wanna carry this many around, usually what I'll do is I'll keep one pen and I'll keep it in a pen sleeve. That way it stands out a little bit and it also protects the pen as I'm carrying it around. And the last thing that it really shouldn't be underrated is a Ziploc bag. Whenever you're flying and you have fountain pen ink, it's never a bad idea to carry your ink in a Ziploc Ziploc bag at least on the flight. That way if there is a leak, everything stays contained. If you are going to be flying, definitely check out my Fountain Pen 101 video on flying with fountain pens. I go into all detail about that. And if you like these products, you want to learn more about them, be sure to check them out on GouletPens.com. Thanks so much for watching this, and if you like this video and you want more like it, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Ask any questions you want in the blog comments or on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and right on.